everybody, Jeff. Welcome to the Executive Gardener channel. I have what I hope to be a very interesting episode for all of you to watch. So when I first started gardening many years ago, um, a few years back, uh, I always focused on when I used organic fertilizer to fertilize uh, the roots. So if I used uh, MicroLife organic fertilizer, I would put it in the hole where I dug the vegetable plant and that allow the roots, roots to absorb the nutrients and so forth. Well, recently I've changed that approach a little bit and I've started foliar feeding. So foliar feeding, of course, is spraying the leaves uh, as opposed to uh, and allowing the leaves to uptake and absorb the nutrients uh, as opposed to the roots. Now, I want to make something perfectly clear. When you're doing organic gardening, it's always most important to feed your soil first. So soil is a living organic body, okay? So the more organic material, positive bacteria that we put into the soil, the best. Uh, to me, the second best is probably foliar feeding. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the science of foliar feeding and how exactly I do that to keep my plants healthy. So uh, let's talk about how foliar feeding works too, a little bit about the science of it. So uh, foliar feeding, like I talked about, uh, involves uh, spraying a mist over the leaves of the plant. Now, <clears throat> the, the leaves of the plant, the science of the plant, just like our skin, our epidermis, uh, uh, leaves also have an epidermis. So you're looking at uh, leaves of a lime tree here. Now, the underside of the leaf <clears throat> is mostly um, built of stoma or uh, stomata. S, S, oh, I'll put the spelling up on the screen so you see it. And those are tiny pores, just like we have in our skin, that are, that are critical in the photosynthesis process. So those tiny pores allow in carbon dioxide, oxygen, and other gases, and they also, certainly, they let out um, uh, oxygen. So uh, they're critical to all plants. Now, the stomata are located all over the leaves, but most of them are on the bottom of the leaves. So when you're doing your foliar feeding, you want to really focus spraying the mist of the solution on the bottom of the leaves. So not only to the, can the stomata absorb gases and exchange gases for plants through the leaves, which is critical again in photosynthesis, but it can also absorb nutrients. In this example, foliar feeding with whatever foliar feed you're going to use for your plants. So the stomata that exist on the leaves uh, are mostly wide open at um, either right before dawn or dusk, okay? So they typically close uh, in certain conditions like high wind, extreme heat, exe uh, for example. So the most effective time to do foliar feeding when the stomata on the leaves are going to be wide open is probably the early morning before the sun rises, okay? And that's where I am here. I don't typically get up this early on a Sunday, but I wanted to do this episode and share with my subscribers and viewers the advantages of foliar feeding. So I typically will uh, do foliar feed before eight o'clock in the morning here in Houston, Texas. It's important that you feed the foliage and spray the foliage uh, before it gets 72 degrees, 75 degrees. Once that happens, it starts to close up and the absorption rate of the foliar feed is not as effective. So what are the advantages of foliar feeding versus providing the fertilizer to the, to the roots? Well, you can look many articles and I've studied this. The science shows you that by foliar feeding your plants, your organic nutrients, uh, it's not, the uptake of the nutrients or the fertilizer is nine to ten times more effective, okay? So what that means is that if you put, again, in my example, MicroLife into the hole before planting the plant, the roots will absorb some of it. Uh, it's ten times more effective. So the plant gets ten times more nutrients if the same fertilizer is applied to the foliage and foliar spray through the uh, stomata. Okay, so uh, it can be very effective. Uh, I always, always emphasize you should always use some f sort of organic foliar spray. In my example, I'll show you, I have a Gardenville CT um, and liquid plant fertilizer. You'll see it's a combination of uh, 232 two, um, and you spray it, uh, and I'll show you how you do it in a second, how you spray it on the plant. But there's many of them out there. You can search the web and find many different type of organic fertilizers for doing your foliar spray. In addition, so 
you have the N, the P, and the K, there's also other micronutrients which you can get, which will give you, excuse me, other fertilizers that will give you the micronutrients, not just the macronutrients that some of these do. So hang tight, let me show you how I apply the foliar spray. So here I am at one of my uh, grapevines, and you can see the leaves here. It's real simple, so I don't need to be in focus here. I'll show you what I'm doing. So uh, to apply the spray, you can see that I have a standard spray pump sprayer. Um, fits uh, one gallon. It's important that when you do your foliar spray that you shake it up really good. Now uh, this calls for mine uh, uh, two ounces per gallon of water, and then you see I have a sprayer hose like this. So the important thing about this is that when you spray foliar spray, it's more important that mist, the mist gets on uh, the entire underside and over top of a leaf. So the top and the underside of a leaf, again, the underside is very important. So uh, it's easier for the leaves to absorb the water when it's in small mist um, uh, droplets versus uh, the entire thing just being doused like a garden hose. So what you want to do is you want to take your nozzle and adjust it to more of a mist spray. And uh, what you want to do is you want to cover uh, it as soon as possible, uh, as much as possible, the leaf. And excuse the background noise, some of my sprinklers have gone off, uh, so no, no worries. So take a look what I do here. I simply have a mist on, I spray the leaves on the top, okay, like such. And then it's important to get on the bottom of the leaves. So you want to cover uh, the leaves as much as possible as such. And again, it's important to do it um, at the early morning before it gets too hot. So the water has time to absorb through the stomata and uh, the leaf can uptake it. So all leaves for the most part benefit from foliar spraying, not just grape leaves like I'm doing here. Um, all leaves do. Now, um, there's been some argument whether tomato plants benefit from it or not because they get mildew, but I use it on my tomato plants as well. So the frequency, how often should I do it? I foliar spray every two or three weeks, uh, all of my plants, all of my leaves. I'm, I'm going to tell you, if you do this, look at your leaves before and after. Give it a day or two after your foliar spray. What you'll see is a remarkable greenness and fullness in your leaves and in your plants. Uh, it makes a remarkable difference. So uh, that's it. It's that simple, guys. Not that hard to do. And uh, buy yourself a sprayer. It works really well. So that's it, guys. That's how you do foliar spray. A little bit about the science of foliar spray, how you apply it. It's relatively simple. I don't care what foliar spray you buy. Make it organic um, and apply it to your plants. And keep in mind, junk in, junk out. So if we feed our plants uh, a good macro and micronutrients, fertilize them well, uh, they will reward us. So whether you're growing great lush fruit like this beautiful lemon or vegetable plants, you spray them with foliar spray, they will reward you. They will taste incredible and a hundred times better than what you buy in the store, okay? I guarantee you for the most part, the store-bought stuff, not only was it picked a few days ago, um, so it's been off the vine, but chances are they didn't use the same great organic macro or micronutrients that you did. So that's all I have. Before I uh, leave the show, I wanted to announce something. So I've decided that I'm going to start giving away things to my viewers, my subscribers. I really appreciate the feedback and the comments I get from my subscribers around the world that enjoy my channel. My channel is about us learning together, about us staying humble and building a community for which we can exchange information on the great facts and information about gardening. So that's what I try to do at my channel and I hope you've enjoyed that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give away a green stalk garden. I'm going to pay my money. I'm not getting it from the manufacturer. I'm not uh, uh, paid by the manufacturer. I'll use my money and give away my green, uh, a four-level green stalk garden uh, to one of my subscribers. I'm going to do it in the, probably the next month or two. Uh, I'll keep you uh, posted. So what that means is that gives you uh, time to become a subscriber to my channel. All you have to do is be a subscriber to the Executive Gardener channel. I'll randomly pick a winner and I'll ship a green stalk tower garden. I'll show you a picture of it now on the screen and uh, that's it. So thanks for joining uh, this episode of the Executive Gardener channel. 
Hope everybody is starting to get their planting out for the spring and fall. And we'll see you next time. If you liked the episode, give me a thumbs up. And remember, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be giving not just a green stalk garden, but other giveaways to my subscribers, if you're a subscriber, in the near future. Until next time, take care. Bye.